Hi folks, Andrew the Fulgore Milano guy here. Uh, I'm going to today for this video go through the installation um, requirements, things to note. Now this unit of course, this is my unit at home. It is um, obviously already installed. I've been using it for close to three years now. Uh, but what I'm going to do is kind of pull it out, um, pull some pieces off of it, um, and just kind of go through what uh, you need to uh, consider when you're doing your installation, uh, the steps that were involved, uh, the various parts and where they are um, when you first unpack it, um, and, uh, and some additional uh, steps for setting the unit up or some pitfalls that you may run into that uh, hopefully this video will help you avoid. So um, the unit itself, when it comes packed and you, you remove the box, uh, many of the parts are packed in the upper portion of the uh, the packaging. So um, in this case, the grates are separate. They're not mounted on the product. Um, they have some rubber bumpers on them to protect the surface when they're installed, but they come packed in the top uh, of the unit. The burners and uh, the brass burner rings and the burner caps themselves are installed already. Uh, and taped down into place so that they don't move about. The back guard that we see here, uh, I have a three inch back guard to match my countertop, uh, but typically these units are coming with a island trim, island back guard, which is the same level, matches up with the same level as the grates. You may also, the customer may also have um, a cast iron accessory um, back guard that they can purchase separately. It matches the finish of the cast iron grates. Um, and, but sits at the same level and they all install uh, slightly differently but it's very obvious and instructions also uh, address how to install those those trims but I'm actually going to pull this unit out and we'll kind of see the back and all the hookups and the uh, anti-tip bracket and things like that. Included with the unit uh, typically packed inside of it um, you're going to have a roasting pan and uh, in a plastic bag you'll have your uh, installation instructions, you'll have use and care manual, <clears throat> and in this case this is a dual fuel unit. It uh, comes with an injector set for converting over to LP, liquid propane uh, gas, and those injectors would be for the four burners, so there would be eight. There's two per burner, simmer burner and outer flame burner. And so if we were to convert this to LP, which I do have another video uh, showing how to do that conversion, um, you would change out the injectors for each of those. But again, that's in another video. But suffice to say that it's always included. If this was an all gas range, we'd also have an extra two injectors, one for a broiler burner and one for uh, bake burner inside the oven. So we're not doing anything else with those uh, today, but just to let you know that this is what's uh, included in the oven when it ships. Included in the top of the uh, packaging uh, would be the back guard or in the case of newer units, island trim. Island trim is what's included with um, the ranges. The toe kick is also included in the top part of the packaging. The grates are separated in the top part of the packaging and all the four legs um, are in the packaging as well uh, and it's up to you as the installer to uh, install the, each of those legs. There's three that are the same and then there's one that's got a flange on the bottom of it and that flange interacts with the anti-tip bracket which we'll see later in the video. Um, and anti-tipping is a, a requirement or an anti-tip bracket is a requirement uh, by law, uh, by code, um, to prevent the event of um, a youngster or a toddler climbing up on this door uh, and then having the range tip over and land on top of them, injuring them or, uh, or even worse. Uh, so in this case, uh, I do have the anti-tip bracket installed. So the toe kick, we'll kind of do this in reverse order. I'll show you how to remove it. So looking underneath the range, we see one, 
to three of the same legs and then the individual or unique leg which is that goes on the back and engages with the anti-tip bracket of course the anti-tip bracket could be installed on the left hand side as well you just got to make sure that you put the uh, corresponding leg the anti-tip leg on the same side as the bracket uh, so it engages and this is what prevents the range from tipping forward um, as we scan across we'll also see the uh, 1450 uh, plug which is 240 volt 50 amp uh, of course the range doesn't use 50 amps this is a dual fuel range gas cooktop and electric oven it really only uses uh, it actually stays under 20 amps um, but this is the typical uh, electric range hookup that you'll see in the customer's home uh, and then going to the left we'll see this is the included regulator uh, coming with the range and we've got an arrow pointing in the direction of gas flow so the gas is coming from the flex line um, and these connections on the right side of the regulator uh, are not included with the uh, range um, so we've got a brass uh, union adapter there and then also a flared union adapter for the um, flex line which of course gets tightened very tightly uh, to seal up uh, on this side everything to the left of the regulator gets included with the range so you've got the regulator you've got a brass union adapter um, and then underneath that connector or between the brass adapter and the connector on the left is a fiber washer as well that needs to be included and that's what creates the seal you don't have to crush this down like you do on a flared fitting um, you just seal up against the uh, fiber washer much like a garden hose um, and there are torque settings included in the uh, instruction manual not that anybody has a torque wrench or uses a torque wrench but you just need to snug it and just test to make sure that it's not leaking it doesn't have to be crushed and in fact if you over tighten it uh, you can do damage to the fiber washer and create a leak scenario and that's not what you want to do but this is going to be the same connection that you see on the bottom of the all gas range as well uh, the difference would be that you would now have just a regular 120 volt uh, plug um, I think it's a 5-15 five, five um, plug uh, that you would use on the gas range. And that's just for the sparker and the, and the clock timer. And if we zoom out, we will see, or pan out, we'll see um, this clip on the right and on the left. So these are the clips that hold the um, toe kick in place. So we've got a, t a tab that goes in the slot and then this receiver that snaps over the um, spring clip and newer models like i mentioned before this unit is about three years old newer models uh, actually use a magnet now in place of this receiver uh, magnet in place of the receiver uh, which then just uh, holds the toe kick in place against this steel bar and so we'll demonstrate that now, putting the toe kick on. So grab the toe kick. You want to put the tabs in the slot and then rotate it up and push it into place. If it doesn't snap in like that, you don't want to force it because you could end up bending the spring clip, which is in fact what led to the use of magnets uh, on newer production. So uh, something to watch out for uh, when you're installing the leg is this spring clipped nut cert that is the receiver for the legs. Um, and what we've seen in the past is accidentally when somebody's trying to feel around down here and trying to install this leg that they um, knock the spring clip up out of place or out of position. Let's see if we can do that. Something like that. And uh, you know as they're pushing the threaded part around trying to find the nut cert they've accidentally pushed that nut up and out of position so um, and then sometimes they think maybe that it wasn't installed ever 
in the first place. Uh, but chances are um, it's actually just been pushed up in through that hole and you just have to retrieve it and snap it back into place and then you can install the leg. So we'll go through that exercise now as well. So if you get yourself in a situation where the nut cert's not there or you've accidentally knocked it off, you will have to remove the door. So we're lift those two tabs, rotate the door up, put your fingers underneath the handle, rotate it up, and swing the bottom out. Set the door off to the side. Um, and what we're going to do is remove this lower skirt uh, to gain access to where those. So you got three screws. And there you can see, we'll get a little flashlight on this. So I've just placed the leg there just to support the range. We can see the nut cert is just sitting in there in th inside that pocket. And you can see the other one over here installed. So what we'll need to do is snap that back down into place and then put the leg back into position. So I'm just going to lift it up. Snap down in place. And the leg is installed. So we can put this skirt back into place. So tip it up, and let the hinges fall into position. When you tip it down, if it doesn't go all the way down flat, it means the hinges aren't properly fully engaged. So don't try and push this tab down because you can see it's not going all the way down. There's that one. So tip it up again and push it in down at the bottom and wait for that hinge to drop in. You'll feel it drop. And now it goes down all the way flat. And we can push our tabs in. The tabs should go in nice and easy. And so the same deal on the back, if, uh, if the receiver's not there or it's been knocked out accidentally, you have to remove the back with these screws in order to get access to the receiver down in here. But again, it's not a big job. You can access the receivers.
in this case for this back guard. We've got three screws along the back. Uh, in some cases in the island trim, the island trim you might be screwing straight down into these same holes if it's the cast iron, but the stainless island trim that comes with it typically screws into these three holes on the back like that. And we'll slide the range back into place. And put the toe kick back on. Make sure all our burners are working. Looks good. 